Somebody, somebody, somebody's son's gonna love me one day. Yep, Tiwa Savage, Somebody's Son, featuring Moisha. Nice song. I mean, well, Brandy, Moisha. Moisha. Motida. Eatida. Motida. Ah. Let's get to the stories that have been trending this week. It's time for the trending topic. All right, guys, the beginning of this week confirmed that Gigi Patrick Allen said there is nothing wrong with Jamaica that cannot be fixed with what is right with Jamaica. Nine-year-old Phyllis Persa uh, and 13-year-old Winnesha Barrett, both abducted days apart from Bath in St. Thomas, were found alive thanks to community unity and effort, and they are now undergoing treatment in hospital. This one gave us all such a big... <sighs> Sigh Collective of relief sigh, yeah. because we've heard so many stories of kids going missing and the results have just been heartbreaking. Yeah. Almost all the time. Yeah. And just so when you, when you find them alive, it's, it, you have to celebrate. And, and I think that the entire nation was watching it unfold because, you know, everyone at that, that side of the island in Bar St. Thomas came out in numbers. And it, it goes to show there's nothing that we can't do if we collectively as a nation yeah. come together. We can't, there's nothing we can't fix. But I think too much times division causes the problems in this nation. Yeah. And, but that was a great example of how if we decide that we're going to do something about something, something will get done. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I, I mean, because everybody was out on the road, yeah. like morning, noon and night. And then um, the community kind of took justice in their own hands and ended up making a wrong call as well you know that resulted in a mob killing so yeah um and even that in itself um they, they speak about community policing and you know the community being in charge of th the community but they require it requires a certain level of emotional intelligence from people to know that you can't take justice itself into your own hands though you may be infuriated by what happened you have to be mindful that there is someone life still at stake. Mm -hmm. So you can't just get up and say, all right, the first person we see and we can't identify himself, we want to take it upon ourselves. Yeah, and, I, and yeah. I wondered about that as well. Like, what would have, I, I, I don't know. You, you can only sit down and speculate and say, boy, you know, what is it that would uh, have indicated to you that he could possibly be the person? Yeah. Is it just like a man who just stood up and said at the road and say, yeah, man. It's somebody else that they couldn't identify. Somebody that came into the community that no one could identify. And that was one of the problems. I, yeah. I think if there's going to be, and I hear the term jungle justice, there has to be common sense in that as well, because mm -hmm. you can't just operate off your own emotions. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So. Well, another story, a gathering, um, they call it a religious gathering, turned deadly Sunday, sending shockwaves across the country. Three members of the Pathways International Restoration of Montego Bay were killed. Two were killed by members during an alleged ritual. The third was shot and killed when he attacked the police on arrival on the scene. So this story, and it's even gotten international it's attention. It's ongoing. Because there keeps, there's always something else that develops. Something else comes out every single day. Whether it's a voice note. Like the voice notes yesterday. Yeah. That came up. You know, whether it's a voice note, whether it's, a, whether it's pictures, whether video. it's video. It's, it's an evolving story. And... At one point, I said to myself, I saw people say, you know, why are people surprised that these things are happening in Jamaica? It, it is surprising because we're a Christian nation, you know, based on what you grew up and you knew. But there are a lot of things that are happening. And my grandfather always said, where there is good, there's just, a mo just as equal amount as bad to balance life. And if a, a country like Jamaica has um, the most churches per square mile, you may think that on the other side of that, there are other people who are doing ill will in that same space. Yeah, but, but you see, and this thing about that, Pathways International did not, it, I, from what I've been reading and what I've been gathering, it did not disguise itself as um, a, a church that was anti-Christ, if you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, was, it was almost like it was rooted in Christianity. Mm -hmm. um, and out of that, it was, you know, so things were developing. And, and, and what was interesting to me is that for, for certain members who have come forward now to speak, they were saying they've never seen it gotten to this degree, you know, where somebody's life would have been taken as a human sacrifice. And to hear, oh, um, one of the persons who, who died as a result was asked moments before or, or months before to switch a policy, an insurance, insurance policy, policy. Yeah. you know, 
and the gentleman who died was promised a kidney, his, his, his sister, I believe, was saying. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's disguised as religion, as a spiritual pathway, yeah. <laughs> you know, to God, to Christ, to something that's holy. And then all of a sudden, it's disruption yeah, and, it, and it, chaos. It happens sometimes when people are seeking acceptance, when they feel isolated. So sometimes you don't feel like you belong to a community. And now you find people who are... Like-minded. Like-minded. Mm -hmm. And then you feel comfortable, and then it takes a turn for the, to, for the worst. But the Jamaica Council of Churches um, on Wednesday um, expressed outrage at the loss of lives and injuries connected to the recent reported tragedy in Montego Bay. Um, councillors offered comfort... Um, to those mourning the loss of family members. So. Yeah, and, 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 and it, it's, 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 you know, a lot of people will be looking at the members and saying, oh, how are you supposed to do that? Are you supposed to know something wrong with this? Are you dung? Are you this? Are you no, you have, to, you have to understand and extend some level of empathy to these people who, you know, you, you, they, they went through a process. Yeah, and psychology is a powerful exactly. thing. Exactly. You know? Psychology is a powerful thing. If someone can influence you, influence your mind, man... Them can sell eyes to eyes skin or some people. Because we've been looking for a messiah. Yeah, lots and of people have been looking for a yeah. messiah. But them speak about the false prophets that will come mm -hmm. in the last days and all that. So, yeah, recently awarded with the National Honor of the Order of Distinction, Commander Class, five-time Olympic gold medalist Elaine Thompson Hero now confirms that she has split from the MVP track club. So, yeah, uh, I, I guess another story that's been um, out there for the past couple of months, uh, probably a month and a half, um, the... Fastest woman alive, over 100 and 200 meters, has confirmed her split from the Bruce James-led MVP track club. And it's been a story for a long time. It has been. We've been hearing the chat all yeah, over. I, but I mean, I think what, what, it, what it is now is that because she had come out and um, on the Brothers from another podcast denied that, you know, there, there's any truth to the statement that she's leaving. Mm -hmm. She describes it as rumors. Right, which she did as well with the Gleaner and yeah. with other yeah, Jamaican sources. Yeah, because she, she said, you know, the media's making up um, stories because she's the fastest woman in the world. And that didn't sit well with a lot of people, but it's her opinion. It's how she feels. But she is, and she said it, immortal. She has done something no other woman has ever done in track and field. And she... I, I have no I think no issues with her moving on from MVP. It doesn't matter where she wants to train because it's her life. Yeah. You know, we, and, we're and invested there's no because indication, we're a nation. There's no indication that she was leaving to go to another club. I think one of the things that she said was uh, she's now building out her team. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's it. She's just building out her team now. And, and I guess her husband will fill that role. Um, well, it remains right to be now. seen. Though. So we'll see what happens with it. I mean... Uh, because until I see it... I agree with you, and I can understand that maybe there are legal implications in coming out too early until mm. certain things were final to say, yes, for sure, I am leaving this space. But the conversations were happening, and people were more than likely guessing that, yeah, it's happening. Uh, I mean, yeah. a female, uh, an athlete of the year contender on, on the female side, which was a stacked year for female athletics. The women performed absolutely brilliantly. But, I mean, I, as I said to people, I'll just sit back and wait to see what happens. I'm looking forward to. Born of Jamaican parents, guys, in Harlem, New York, Colin Powell, the first black U.S. Secretary of State, the first black National Secretary Advisor during the end of Ronald Reagan's presidency, and the youngest and first black chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff under President George H.W. Bush died at the age of 84 of COVID complications. He was fully vaccinated, but he was at greater risks. Uh, because he suffered from multiple myeloma and Parkinson's as well. Condolences to his family, and we know that he has family in Jamaica as well. Um, so this was one of them that, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people, you know, we, we hear the conversations all over again about what was the real connection to his passing. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm very happy that the family was very open enough to kind of say for sure, um, he had underlying conditions, and so all yeah. of these things contributed to him yeah, and, transitioning. I mean, yeah, and may his, may his soul um, rest where it rests. Uh, there are a lot of things about um, Colin Powell that history will tell the story. Uh, it's sad that someone that he has lost his life, but there are so many stories in history about his involvement in certain activities that led to the death of many people. Mm -hmm. um, and history will tell the story. If you're interested, you can read about it. But 
it is tough, and I, I, I read the, the tributes, and then at the, on, on the other end, I thought about the countries like Iraq and Afghanistan where lies were told um, under his administration, and a lot of people lost their lives. So it, it's, it's tough for me, but at the, at the same time, um, I still wish um, the best for his family. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Well, 16 Americans and one Canadian national with uh, the Ohio-based Christian Aid Ministries were kidnapped in Haiti by the armed gang 400 Mauzo. And now the gang is demanding a ransom of $1 million per person for their release. Five children are among the hostages. Yeah. <laughs> one million per hostage? One million per hostage. You just can't pay that, man. You just can't pay that. What do you mean? Can't it. Anyways, can't guys. It. I mean, it is, it is unfortunate, the, the situation, but if it's 17 million, you just can't pay it, man. Them full of money. It is still not a right thing no, to... No, I know. You know they, and you they know don't negotiate best. with, with terrorists or whatever. But if the lives of the people are worth anything to the country... It worth a lot, I exactly. am sure. Anyways, guys, that's it for trending topics. Get the money. <laughs> Set you much more. We cannot deal with you, though. Get the money.